wait for it. The plastic never actually sets up. So today I'm using the Finish One Automotive Grade Clear that I picked up from Sherman Williams. I have Fast Hardener, Moderate Reducer, and Hollow Pearl. The box calls for using it in a 4 to 1 ratio, however I've found that it does not lead to a good hard finish. Through experimentation I have increased the ratio until I'm happy with the results. Here I am using a tablespoon to measure out 0.75 ounces of reducer, 1.5 ounces of hardener, and then I will top off to 5 ounces of the actual clear. This gives me a ratio of roughly 3 to 2, which is significantly more than the box calls for. That should be sufficient to give two full coats to the neck. It's important to get these two part clears mixed thoroughly, which also evenly disperses the hollow pearl throughout the solution. And now for the magic. Got that in the oven. So what we have here, other than an obviously large cardboard box, is a digital temperature sensor in there, and I've got this cheap 500 watt heater off Amazon. I've got it up on blocks here because the fan is still going on the other side of this. So I'm pulling air around and across the bottom to get a continuous sleep of fresh air and remove any solvent. This is at an angle because it's blowing against the wall of the box and carrying the heat around. Now I have measured, this is 144 degrees Fahrenheit, 62 Celsius, the, the temperature of the air that comes out. It blows out, it's always pulling fresh, clean air, no solvents and no heated air. So the temperature it outputs is stable. That blows up against this wall and it just kind of rolls around here and the hot air tends to rise more and push the cool air out the bottom. The temperature meter steadily increasing it actually works quite well. With this particular configuration, last time I did this, it was exactly stable at 126 degrees Fahrenheit, 52.2 degrees. That is an ideal temperature to bake or accelerate this. Now, according to the instructions on the can, raising the temperature from room temperature up to 52 Celsius, 126 Fahrenheit, increases the speed with which this cures by 16 times. Uh, so I will have this in there for three hours, but it'll be like it cured two days. Then I'll let it cool overnight, and in the morning, by the time I get around to it, it'll have another 12 to 18 hours. So it'll be almost like it's been curing for three full days, but just get it done overnight. Uh, I'm pretty proud of this. This thing was like 25 bucks. This was like 20, something like that. I'll put links in the description. This is a really good setup. Now, I bought the relay specifically because this is only 500 watt and this is contains a 10 amp solid state relay. So if I wanted to, I could directly connect this to this. And if it gets too hot, this would actually turn that off and turn it on and off to maintain a specific temperature. For a temperature controlled setup like this, this is incredibly cheap and dirt easy. I'm pretty impressed. There it is, my two part automotive clear coat oven. I want to remove this masking and remask the fretboard. And the reason I want to do that is this has had layer after layer after layer of stuff put on it, sanded off, put back on over and over again. I'm concerned about this line here. I'm concerned about tear out. I'm concerned about uh, it being too much of a ridge, which of course I'll go back through and smooth out later. But I want to remask it, thinking I'm going to mask it just ever so slightly higher so that the last two layers of clear actually go on over the line of where the paint is, actually kind of come over the top of it. My idea here was that I would be able to fold it open and then come from the inside with the razor blade and run along the edge. However, I quickly realized that I was getting much better results by coming at it from the outside of the tape rather than from the fretboard side. This took quite a lot of time, but I was trying to be extra careful and make sure that I wasn't damaging any of the existing finish that was on there that I did want to keep. So after I sanded down the ridges on the edge of the fretboard, I then remasked it so that the sides of the fretboard were exposed. Then I took it to the booth and shot two more layers of clear over the top. I stuck it in the makeshift hot box for three hours, and after that, leave it set for about three days. While I was waiting for that to finish hardening up, it was time to work on the body. Since the instructions for the finish are very clear about needing a fresh coat of paint, 
I decided that I had to respray the paint on the body, scrape the binding, and then do the clear coat all on the same day. So I gave the body two more good coats of paint, let it set for about 45 minutes, and took it back to the bench to start scraping again. What I've done is taken my razor blades, for which I've used both of these tips. They do get worn down, you need a good sharp blade for this. And I just snap it in half with a pair of pliers against a hard surface, making sure that my eyes are protected. And then I can take the broken blade and get that lined up so it's 90 degrees. A thumb screw would definitely be an improvement on this design. Okay. 90 degrees, blade is exactly as wide as the binding. We should be good to go. I take the time usually to really lock this thing down because you definitely don't want that to budge even the tiniest amount. I've got my edge here, I place that. It doesn't hurt to do this because you're less likely to skitter. So, And then you'll notice I rotate it this way. That, in my experience, helps me get further to the outside edge. Uh, obviously, you can also tilt up and back a little bit, rotate this way. You've actually got a lot of options. And you just got to figure out what works best for you and what works best on the area you're doing. And that is basically what I just need to do around the whole thing. When I get back to this edge, I'll reset to the smaller edge. And then the last thing I want to cover, this edge. So we've got a bit of a bevel here. This is 90 degrees. If you do this, you're going to be digging the tip in. It's very important that you reset the angle of the blade whenever you do a beveled part because it's going to have a different angle than the 90 degrees you're working with on the rest of the body. By far, the two biggest pitfalls of this is leaning your bit in, which causes it to push forward and cross over that line of your binding. And the second one is when you've got it set small and you're scraping this, it's very easy to slip off and end up gouging down this way. And you gouge the binding or even end up gouging the body if you really slip up. Just a couple things to keep in mind that I've learned at this point I am spraying two coats of the clear with hollow pearl. So what I've done here is mask off the widest part of the binding. It's part of a two-part strategy to keep the hollow off of the black binding. The reason for that is to keep the binding a matte black for maximum contrast to the white body. I am peeling off the masking here after the body has set for about 30 minutes. So the clear coat is still quite soft, but has gelled together enough that it holds its shape. This is a perfect time to get a decently clean edge. The edge doesn't have to be perfect because I'll be coming back through and scraping the narrower part here in a couple hours. This just came out of the booth. The stuff has only been on there for about an hour and a half, which is exactly where I want it because it is set enough that just brushing against the surface will not damage it, but it's also still soft enough. Say if I were to dig in with my fingernail, uh, I could dig it up, which means it is at the perfect set for me to, yet yeah, once again, scrape the binding. I know I've made it a point to not work while I'm tired, however, because of when I sprayed the paint on this and needing to get the clear on within a certain amount of time and then the time that I've had to wait before I could pull the binding off it ended up being quite late but I am pushing on okay so yeah I'm just gonna do this for god knows how long I have put the last two coats of clear on here I put it in a hot box at about 125 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours which is roughly worth two days worth of curing time and then since then it's also set three more days so 
I am confident that this finish is cured enough for me to do some sanding. When I masked off last time, I masked off so that a significant portion of the fretboard is showing, and I did this for a couple reasons. One, maybe I already showed this, but I've got this old Kramer neck that kicking around, uh, and actually, you can see that, uh, that is, I'm pretty sure that's actual Brazilian rosewood. That is a really, really pretty piece of wood. I noticed that they had actually brought the clear, clear up to the edge of the fretboard like that. So I decided that that makes a certain amount of sense during my process here because it means that after the paint line and the first couple coats of clear, I was able to remove the masking tape, set it up, leave a gap there, and that clear that filled in now kind of rounds over that edge. Now I can go in here and sand everything smooth. And then this upper edge where the masking tape is, when I actually do the fret ends and the fretboard to get it playable, I'll actually be going over that over and over again with many different grits of paper. And that will give me a fully smooth, comfortable surface. There's something else that I need to talk about. And that is the finish I'm going for here. It looks like a white guitar, but in certain lights, it starts to glitter like a snowbank. Like it has little flashes of color from within the white void, like all over the place. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's why I wanted the fretboard black and why I'm going with black binding, because I want those to contrast to the white and the little bits of color inside and like help set it off. So this whole thing has been about creating a sense of subtle, but it's also intense. Like I'm trying to, to balance these concepts and create something interesting. I'm trying to create something interesting. I need to come in probably with a small block. I'm thinking just 320 would be all that's necessary and just take that ridge down just a hair. At that point, I can go over the entire neck and send it back to 1000 grit to get this little bit of orange peel. Is it trying to concentrate on doing all the camera stuff and also make sure that I'm not screwing this up is somewhat challenging. But I am going to go low and slow here. So that's what I'm going to do for till the end of time. Uh, I have finished uh, with the sanding of this edge. Now I've got this perfectly smooth. It feels great. And that was absolutely mandatory. Yeah, that would just be awful if there was an edge running all the way along the fretboard. And now I need to go ahead and sand the entire neck. And I'm going to go over the whole thing with... 320 or 400, we'll, we'll kind of see how it reacts. Uh, this automotive paint is pretty strong stuff. Um, with previous paints, I would start at like, uh, well, I wish I had some 600 or 800, but I'd start with 1,000 just to make sure I wasn't burning through with this stuff. I feel pretty comfortable starting with like a 320. So uh, anyways, I'm going to go through, I'm going to knock out this orange peel, and then I'll come back in with 1,000 and smooth it all out make it look nice and then i'm going to go ahead and actually take it back to the paint booth and put one more coat of clear gloss on it uh, just to make sure that i've got that edge covered up everywhere that your hands are touching is just as silky smooth as possible okay we got some 320 some 400 and some thousand i'm gonna go ahead and start with the 320. Uh, i'm pretty confident this is going to be good at this point i don't want to go in heavy because all i'm trying to do here it's just scuff up the surface real good, which will make it that much easier for the 400, which comes in next. Now I'm going to let the 400 come in and do a little, pretty much the bulk of the work, because by the time I switch to the 1000, I'm going to be more in a polishing mode. Now when you're sanding out orange peel, at least when I'm doing it, I don't ever expect it to look homogenous. Like there's still going to be a few little... Tiny, tiny, shiny spots, and that's okay, I think. Yeah, I think we're ready to switch to a thousand. Smooth all this out. That is ridiculously smooth. Wait for it. Huh, upgrades. This should make things a little easier. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.